Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. Welcome to another studio vlog. Today I will be focusing on starting a bunch of designs for my next store drop, which, whoa, which will be in a couple of months. You guys would have already seen me planning my weekly tasks and also doing the sketches for the products, but today I want to start the t-shirt. Nathan's coming over today to have a work day, so that should be fun, but I also need to look over a contract before he gets here, like a brief before he gets here that we just got for another job with Samsung. It's another like video job, which is what we did before. I don't know if you guys saw that, but yes, we've done a couple of those jobs since and it's really, really fun to like not have to be in content and to direct content. So I'm really excited to get more of that work. But we must start because my battery's running out. I'll see you in a second. Hey, look, I want to make these bad apple teas. I'm so excited. That means I can make bad apple stickers if I want. Apple scented, maybe rotten apple scented. Ew, <laughs> bit of dirt, bit of apple flavor. Some worm. Because we had the little peach gang, but now this is their enemy, the bad yeah. apples. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so progress. I have just photoshopped my design onto a tee. I want to do like a pocket design. So the design kind of looks like this, but I just don't think it looks nice as a big tee. So I made it as a pocket tee. And then uh, I just photoshopped it onto a random yellow shirt just to see what it would look like. Because I want to do like this gold shirt. Let me show you the design again. Boop. Just so you get a closer look. And then I sent it to Chris and I was like, what do you think of this? And he was like, oh, I think that, is there going to be anything on the back? Because usually pocket tees do have stuff on the back. And I wasn't thinking they would, oh, also, this red is going to be puff print, which is like when they add something to the, the ink of the screen print, which makes it puff up when they're heating it and dry it at the end. And so I'm really excited to see what that looks like because the red is going to be puff and everything else isn't. So it'll look like the Apple List 3D. I've really wanted to use puff print for since I discovered that it existed. So I'm really excited about that. And then Chris mentioned that he thinks something should be on the back. And I was like, oh, I wonder what would be on the back. He's like, maybe like something with text. And I was like, but what text? He's like, I don't know. It's your life. I was like, true, true, true. So I just played around. And I came up with this. So I'm using the apple from the front. And then it says, good apples gone rotten, which I think is really cute. And it, because the last one was a peach gang tea, I imagine that this is like the arch nemesis of the peach gang. But it's the rotten apple boys. I don't really know, but I'm excited because I think it's going to be so cute. I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a design. So I'm doing that in, oops, I'm doing that in fresco. And I've already got the apple that I used before here. Should I do a custom label every shirt, do you think? Like, you know how before there was like the custom mountain? Yeah. Do you think I should do one that matches with every shirt? Well, I mean, you're not going to be using that same screen, are you? Okay, I'll try it. Oh, wow! Oh, wow!
a very, very busy work week. I don't know if you guys remember or if you saw the vlog where I was directing some video content for Samsung. We've actually done a few more of those videos since, but I didn't document them because I didn't want to be the same. But this is going to be a very big week and we have three videos that have um, other talent, which means we have stylists and like hair and makeup people, which means that it's going to be exciting because they can do stuff that I can't do. Obviously Rocket's going to be doing all the video, which is something that I can't do. Um, but I'll be overlooking the project and I did the concepts and delivered the decks and client stuff and Chris is producing as well. It's a big team this time, but I'm excited to take you along for the ride. What I like about this is that it's like something a little different. Sometimes people, like I definitely do this, but I like absorb my career as a part of my identity and sometimes that stops you from doing projects that are not explicitly what that what that field is and this is not the field that I'm in like this is not illustration but it's like creative direction and direction it's really fun for me because I I feel like I do have a strong idea of what I like to see in the content that I make and sometimes I can't do that by myself so this is a really good opportunity to do that and I don't have to be in the videos which is like less stressful for me but you know what is more stressful for me going to have to rely on weather there's a plane there is a plane there is a plane there, is a plane. there. A plane. There is a plane. Today we picked up a bunch of the stuff like snacks for the each day. We've got three shoots to do this week besides the one that we did yesterday. And we also picked up four chairs because tomorrow we have a shoot with four models. And, oh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the client is Samsung. So they're one of my biggest clients. Also one of my favorite to work with because they're really open to creative ideas. They're really excited to make things happen. And they also pay creatives because a lot of people don't do that in the tech industry. <laughs> first things first, we are turning my studio into a photo studio. Hmm, guess we'll have to clear this out. <gasps> What's happening in there? Tonks, what are you doing? cute with those boxes that are saying colors and stuff. It's Tonka, stop. Stop. Yes. Dress that this is not a flattering jumpsuit. It's not my big bud press one. It's like an old vintage workers jumpsuit from possibly Japan. Yeah, it is from Japan. So this is made for a, a Japanese man's body. And maybe we do share a similar body, but it's not cinching me in where I want it to. I want the waist to be up here. <laughs> I don't want it to be this is unflattering Grinch, <laughs> Grinch body type. Here. So just like a, just don't comment on it. We'll just pretend it's not happening. Time to make the chairs. about 7 30 a.m. and I am awake the day of shoot number two but we're gonna call it shoot number one because it's the first one with models I'll try and take you along like I'll try and show you things but I think that I won't have a chance because I want to be present and like doing looking at stuff and t taking things off and stuff but I'll quickly show you now what we're doing and then so you guys know what's going on here so this shoot we are doing 
a bunch of different models. These are some mood board images, like just to show the setup. And so I've got like a little breakdown of which models we have which outfits they have, the chair they have, and the phone they have. So we just want it to look like each model has a very distinct style, and we want them to be able to express their style through their, their tech, essentially. But I love this. It's so cute. I'm so excited to use all these backdrops. I think Matilda's first. I'm not sure if this is the outfit. She's either got this outfit or this one, but I'll just swap them um, if need be. So I've created like a shot list so that we can like race through. And so that we're not like taking more time than we need to on each model and each look. Sort it out via which lens and we're going to go through and then go through each shot and each with each lens we've got some free shooting time. And then I've color coded which models are on which backgrounds and then I'm just going to tick them off as we go. I'm going to have to make sure these phones are charged. Let's do that now. I've got to set up the snacks which is my favorite part of these things because I think it's nice to have special snacks on the day. So this is going to be split over the three shoots that we have because some of them are outdoors. We got some chocolate for energy. I just want people to feel like they're in school again, you know? So we got some gross original chicken flavor, but we got some delicious cheese and onion and delicious salt and vinegar flavor. Maybe I'll keep these salt and vinegars hidden. Can't be giving too much away. Salt and vinegar in the original kind of match your outfit. Well, I guess I just know what I'm doing. The rest can be for the other shoots because we will need them. This is our catering table, catered by me. This doesn't look nice. <laughs> <laughs> catered by me? This looks awful. That doesn't look pretty, but guess what? It's going to be good. My boy. Why don't we use the beanbag as one of the shots? Nah, because I've sit, sat in that before and it's so unflattering. Not that I'm a model. Do you say hello, my tongs? Are we going to have a good day? Are you going to be a good boy? Thank you. You got stinky breath, huh? Yeah. Hello everyone, um, since the last clip we have wrapped the shoot, the shoot was awesome, we have had dinner, we had some Italian food, snuggled with the Tonks, now I'm looking at the footage to see what were the best clips and I'm trying to like cut the stuff that we're not going to use so that at the end of the shooting days I can edit really quickly because I've got all the best shots to choose from. I want to show you, look how, wait, look at this BTS. You'll see us tomorrow when we're prepping for the next shoot. I'm gonna prep what we need to bring, but then you'll see us probably in the park tomorrow. Up with the old and end with the new. I sparkle like a ruby pot of gold for you. All sugar and spice, you know I'm not nice, but I'll send you down the road straight to paradise. And if you like it, well then I like it. And if you love it, well then I love it. And if you want it, well then I want it. Oh, why, why, why? a little late like six minutes late to get to this location today we're shooting in a park we're going to be focusing on like active stuff you can tell i don't really do that because i don't know what it's called what is it called like a workout yeah so this shoot's going to be centered around a workout because we want to feature like the samsung buds which is like their noise cancelling headphones the reason we've chosen this location is because it's quite like vast and there's a lot of different things like there's a squash court there's netball courts there's grass there's t old abandoned tennis courts there's like lots of stuff that we can play with and like make it look like we're in different locations i don't know what to say about today i am a bit worried because yesterday i had a really detailed shot list so we can tick off but this is a little more needs to be improv because we're relying on like what's available at the park like whether there are lots of people 
So let's just hope it's great. I have my snacks, of course. Got Rocket's camera on my lap. Rocket's driving. Got the photographer here. And I hope I can get bubble tea later. at the beach fourth and last video is a beach shoot so i'm gonna try not to get burnt because last night i was like my neck hurts why does it hurt and i realized i got sunburnt which i'd never get so it's like you know i'm not as cautious as i should be but we cleared some of the seaweed away from this place and we're gonna have the model walk in and set up her beach thing the idea is like it's a solo beach day i gotta take the label off this sunscreen and pack the little bags we've got props we've got got clothes i shall hope to film throughout the day but i don't know it doesn't really work we've got esky full of goods and yeah i'll keep you updated hopefully it goes well hopefully i do keep you updated otherwise i'll insert footage from the shoot After the video, Rock and I were gonna get some more b-roll later. We're looking over the footage that we took today and it's looking very good. So I'm very excited to edit over the next few days. Let me show you. So cute. shoot and now Chris and I are going to see the sample puff print for the bad apple tea so I'm excited because I've never seen puff print before and I don't know what it's gonna be like but this they sent um, Chris a phone it looks really good so I'll show you in a second <laughs> Just know that we're always there And when you call, we'll answer you And always get you through Don't matter where you go Cause we're always there Through the fire, through the change We ain't afraid, gonna be here every day We walk the miles, make the space Take the time, never late We do it right I hope you like this video. Uh, I know it wasn't very studio based or very like drawing and illustration based, but I hope that you enjoyed seeing the process because it is part of my work, especially in the last year we've been doing a lot of this work. So I just wanted to share how we've been doing it with you and, and hopefully when you guys see it, it'll make you excited because you've seen the BTS. I'm sorry we didn't film a lot of BTS like at, on the days, especially on the second day, which was like the active day. But if you guys like seeing this stuff, please let me know because I always feel nervous posting it because I just don't know if it's gonna be interesting or if it's what you guys wanna see, but it is what I'm really doing. So that's why I wanted to include it in a studio vlog. Mainly I enjoy having it because it's like a nice 
um, progression of my practice and I want to document that so I can look back on it. I tried to make it as interesting as I could. I hope it, I hope it was interesting. So we're going to do a Q&A, just a very quick one with some questions that I have on my Discord server. But before we do that, I just want to say a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring my videos as per usual and for doing so again this year because it's a new year. Oh my God. Oh wait, happy new year. I never said that. They've just been a big support for my channel for the last few years, but also they create products that I use every single day. This year, I want to do six store launches. So that's a that's like one every two months but I would not be able to do that without Squarespace because they power my store they power my website my blog everything Squarespace powers my entire web presence online is on Squarespace I'm so thankful that they've created a product that's easy to use gorgeous flexible so if I want to change the look on my website I can do it tonight I can do it now. I just click like, a click of the button and then the theme changes everything. I just want to like roast some other people for a second, but there's other web building platforms. Let's say the web experience is like, okay, but then the mobile experience is so bad. Squarespace has like a dedicated team that design these gorgeous templates that look good on mobile, that look good on tablet, that look good on desktop. And you can view all of those things as well as you're changing the theme. It's really, really easy. So that flexibility is really good, especially if you have a new year, new you mindset and you want to like change the things up you can do that but I'm like a solid supporter of the supply theme supply theme is my favorite I've had it for like six seven years and it still looks really nice to me um, it works with my work and I love it so much um, but yes I couldn't do my store launches and I couldn't make these videos without Squarespace so on two levels I really really love them and I'm very thankful to have them so if you guys have not tried Squarespace which is mind-blowing to me because guys I've been talking about Squarespace for like three years if you haven't tried it you really need to try it so you go to squarespace.com slash free little peach you get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase okay now we have the q a it's raining i'm so sorry i don't know if you can hear it but it's raining okay i can't do anything I, unfortunately i wish i could control the weather but i cannot hi i wanted to ask a general question about being a freelance artist i understand that a lot of people may romanticize the idea of working for yourself but i wanted to ask what more realistic issues one might have to consider when pursuing a stable income as a freelance artist if you've answered a similar question before sorry can someone else please direct me to the right video i think that the things that can be really difficult especially when you first transition is being self-motivated it took me like a while to be able to adjust to the idea that I was I had to power my own motivation and I had to be more disciplined myself otherwise things weren't going to get done when you work as a part of a company you can have a bad day and things still keep running but if you have a bad day when you're the one person doing the creative work it shows because you either can't work or the work suffers so I think one thing that's hard is being the main person that's responsible the pressure of res responsibility can be difficult especially when you're working with large clients it can be really stressful to like commit to something or want want to do something and then there's like a fear that it's not going to work out the way that you want it to working within an institution and then moving to doing everything yourself because suddenly you need to be doing all of your emails especially when you first like if you don't have someone doing them i, I assume that's what's happening if you're first uh, moving to freelance you need to be self-motivated to get up every day and do the work even if you don't feel like it you need to chase your invoices sometimes like I've been lucky that my clients have never really kept, kept me waiting on invoices but it really does happen to a lot of people and that can be tough especially if you don't have enough savings making sure that you have like a huge security blanket so if that happens you're fine and also like juggling multiple streams of income so whether it be like um commercial illustration versus maybe stock illustration or social media stuff or an online store. I think that it's important to know that at the beginning is gonna be very difficult because you're, you're building all of this stuff. You're building your discipline, you're building your client base, you're building your skill set. you're building your social media presence perhaps. You're building all of this stuff at one time and it can be a lot. So the start might be slow and I think that can be demotivating for a lot of people because they expect to just leave and have this dream life and it's just not gonna be this way all the time. There are struggles, but I have to say like, obviously if, I, if the struggles outweighed the positives, I wouldn't be doing it, so. I like it. I was wondering if an illustrator from Europe wants to move to Sydney, what would the best first step be? Get a full-time job or try to freelance straight away? This is very specific. Anyone moving from Europe to Sydney? <laughs> I don't get this specific question a lot because it's very specific. But um, in terms of like wh whether people should go straight into freelance when they're leaving university, and I think this applies to this was when you're in a new place, I think you need to g gain other experience first I think it's a good idea to get a job not only for experience but also like forming connections um within the industry making new friends I think if you're moving from Europe to Sydney having a base at a job is a lot 
easier than working as a freelancer by yourself. It's going to be a lot harder for you to find friends. It's going to be more difficult for you to to do the, all of these transitions at once. So I feel like come here, get settled, maybe get a job, whether it be part time casual or like a industry job um, while doing freelance stuff on the side and setting all of that stuff up. Um, setting up your home obviously setting up your social media I don't know if you've already got social media Um, but also like setting up your business like what space do you have to work do you have a studio are you going to have a home studio that's going to take some time and if you're not earning anything that in that time it can be really really difficult for you to thrive as a creative because you're, you're like struggling from paycheck to paycheck stability is a is a very important part of being a professional creative, like creating stability for yourself and making sure that you foster stability before you before you freelance if you can. I am an author, a character designer and an illustrator and I wanted to get hired in an art and design company but due to the pandemic I'm getting refused or there is multimedia design and I don't like it. Now my problem is I wanna go at my own pace and create what I want and write novels I'm working on but my parents are pushing me to get a job for the sake of getting a job, not for the money and it's stressing me out. If you were in my shoes, what would you do? I don't want to be too harsh. I think if I was struggling to get work and I wasn't able to make money, I would get a job. <laughs> I'm going through this now. I'm an author and character designer and illustrator and want to get hired in an art and design company, but due to the pandemic, I'm getting refused. So at the po- at that moment, that's not an option for you. You can still try, but right now you need to have another solution, I think. I think that having work is a really good experience. Like even when I worked at a pizza shop, it taught me how to be responsible with getting there on time. You know, how to talk to customers, how to talk to strangers. I was like 14 and I was really shy. And my manager, after a month, my manager was like, Sean, if you don't talk to the adults, you, you can't work here. I was like, oh my God. So I just forced myself to talk to the adults and now I'm fine with talking to anyone a job is a really 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 good chance for you to learn how to be responsible for you to get gain independence in terms of earning your own money it's really great in terms of showing your parents that you're not just like sitting there because a lot of parents struggle when their kids are in the creative industry because they're worried about their future at least this gives them peace of mind it might also give you peace of mind because then they're not as on you about doing that and that doesn't mean you can't still pursue these other things it just kind of means that you need to realize that right now Either you get this multimedia job that you don't really want and see that as a temporary fix and that you're going to get your dream job later. You're going to continue to try to get hired in art and design while working like a casual job on the side. I just don't see what the issue is in getting a job. I think it's like important. We don't all get the dream job straight away. I worked as in a freaking pizza shop being a waitress. I loved it. I wish sometimes I fantasize about going back and having like my waitress job because it's like, it was just so fun, like opening up every day. And I love like routine. So it's like every day at the same time, go in, make the salads every day at the same time, flip the sign every day at the same time. The first customers come in, had my regular customers. Oh, it was so good. I wish I wish I had my pizza shop job. I loved it so much. Every job can be good. It's just the attitude you bring into it. Maybe I'm being too strict, but I just don't understand. Don't see this job that your parents want you to get as like a a waste of time because it's going to allow you the, the financial independence to spend time on what you want to do if you cannot get a job now as like a character designer and illustrator maybe you can develop your portfolio on the side of doing that casual job often like people want to work in the creative industry and do freelance on the side and that can be so exhausting because i found that when i left my job and working as a designer all day i was so exhausted and i didn't necessarily have the energy to do more creative work so having a casual job means that you can do one thing that's very different and then come home and want to do the creative stuff when i have to do the like the parts of my job that are a bit like stressful or tiring like stuff like admin or juggling things I just think like, oh my God, it's so much better than digging ditches. That's what I always think. And sorry if anyone's watching this digs ditches, like just for me, I'm not strong. I'm weak. (laughs) I'm physically weak. And in that way, in the sun, I'll be mentally weak as well. But there's just so many things that are going to be worse off than doing multimedia. I don't know, especially if you're in the creative industry. I don't want to judge you. I just feel like your parents may be right in this situation. Rocket likes the idea of digging ditches because he wants to get all sweaty, but I don't like being sweaty. It makes me itchy. Okay, the last one is, I remember in one of your videos from a while ago that you wanted to try your hand at ceramics again. Did you ever get a chance to do that? Are you still interested? Yes, I am. But you know, this is the kind of thing that gets pushed back. But I did buy this ceramic kit. Do you know, do you remember the Emmy ceramics stuff that I got from Rocket for my birthday? I also simultaneously bought this like ceramics kit from her. So I'm going to make something from that and she's going to fire it for me. And I'm really excited, but I just haven't had time to do it. I hope the clay doesn't dry out. But maybe that'll be my next video. I hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you very soon.